we bring together for you the best photographers in the world. Do I have a favourite piece of equipment? Helicopters are pretty useful. Recently I realised that I've been in business for 20 years uh, as, a, as a sort of wandering photographer. And a project I've been working on for the last year now is a kind of conclusion to the last 20 years. So I had this idea, I've been in business 20 years in the photographic world, which is an achievement in itself. But also I had these amazing journeys and adventures and people wanted to know what I'd done. And I'd also forgotten where I'd been uh, some of the times. So I had this idea that I would post a picture a day through social media and on my own website for little behind the scenes information about it. And it was a great chance to go back through the archive and see how I got to where I am now and, uh, you know, and the, the stages along the way. I mean, to me, a good picture is, is a mixture of ingredients. You, know, you need a great location, you need a, a super, suitable subject, you need to be totally in control of the equipment that you're using, you need to know and understand your craft. And then you need, I think, the most important ingredient is light. You need to be able to understand daylight and it's something I've become quite obsessed about over the years. It adds that last emotion. If you take that away, then it's a bit like watching a film without music. With a lot of my work, I want it to look like it's spontaneous, but often a lot of work's gone into it before we get to that moment of taking the picture. In a way, being a photographer is sometimes like being an actor. You role play. So if I'm photographing a demonstration, in my mind, I'm a documentary photographer. I get in really close uh, and use prime lenses for the look that I want. Equally, if I'm on location photographing a landscape, then I put that head on. To me, a lot of the battle is won in your mind before you take pictures. How did I become a travel photographer? Well, I became a photographer first. Uh, the travel part came a bit later. So I remember when I first started out, I, I knew I wanted to show people that I could photograph travel but I didn't have any money, I couldn't afford to go anywhere. So I came up with what I thought at the time was an ingenious idea of cutting these shapes out of coloured paper, uh, shooting out of focus, cross-processing, I used to paint dyes on the back of the film. Uh, and I'm, I'd come up with these images that looked like they were inspired by another country. In fact, they were shot in a studio in North London. So all of this is colour armour, background paper. Even the tree uh, is a, a little bit of paper. And to get this uh, warm kind of red savanna grassland, it's actually the cup of my hand with a torch shining into it. So you've got the glow, you know, like those children, they always put the torch uh, under their hand and it glows red. That's how I got that. By being so out of focus, it, it gave you that colour. That thankfully then went on to win an award. And then I got commissioned by Kodak to, uh, to do a Bolivian street scene. So we wanted to use the colours uh, of the Kodak brand at the time. So this elderly lady here is my sort of 25 year old agent at the time. And this was my assistant uh, that I got dressed up in all these bright uh, velvet fabric colours because they would give me the best saturation. I mean, it's funny now looking back, I spent a lot of time with different cowboys and gauchos around the world. But when I first started, I, I remember asking my assistant, to, uh, to dress up as a cowboy and I put him on top of a six foot plastic horse in the studio. And I knew that I wanted to convince people that I could get the emotion of travel, but nobody wanted to pay me to go anywhere there. So I had an exhibition um, in the sort of the mid nineties, I guess, and I'm uh, very fortunate that uh, a lady called Caroline Metcalf, who was a picture editor of Condé Nast Traveller at the time, came to my exhibition and really gave me my first big commission um, in, in, a, in travel uh, photography. I actually like working to a brief. It gives me guidance and stops me going too far off on wild tangents. And I thought elephants in this jungle would be amazing and must be here for sunrise, only to discover that the luxury hotel I was meant to be staying in was 45 minutes away. Well, I was young and I didn't mind, and so I, I gave the hotel keys to my guide and my driver. They drove off, had a lovely night in a, a lovely hotel, and uh, my assistant and I camped in the, in the jungle so that we'd be there for sunrise to get a picture of an elephant and his mahout, his handler. And the pictures that I won Travel Photographer of the Year with, there were two sets, you have to win two portfolios. One was of the Himba tribe in northern Namibia, right up on the Angola border. Sometimes when we go into tribal environments in very remote places, we can be treated with a degree of suspicion. 
but this young girl was just amazing. She was really enthusiastic about being photographed. I showed her the back of the camera and there was a, a weird kind of partnership in, and teamwork in getting the pictures that I wanted to get and she was very content with what we achieved. And the other one was in a beautiful place called Lalabella in Ethiopia. These rock churches cut straight down into granite rock. Sixth, seventh century frescoes on the ceilings and people still use it as a place of pilgrimage. As a photographer, you can be incredibly voyeuristic and watch life going on there every day. And it was those kind of images that I think helped me win uh, Travel Photographer of the Year. So over the 20 years, what are my favorite pictures? I'd like to say I don't really have them and that you know, the usual thing to say is it will be the next one I take. But in Kenya, we met the Maasai who probably, apart from being one of my favorite people to, to, to work with, have survived the best. They've kept their culture, and I guess a degree of stability in the country has helped as well. I remember one time I was actually meant to be photographing a safari, but I'd heard that there was gonna be a local wedding taking place in, in the village. I couldn't miss the opportunity of a Maasai wedding. I, I like that image, one, because I, I remember the story. Uh, it, was, it felt very warm and it felt like a good collaboration of people rather than I stole a picture. It felt like we made it together on her, her very important day. I mean, I often get asked what kind of cameras I use, what kind of equipment that I, that I use. At the moment, I'm using Canon. Uh, over the years, I've used various different cameras, Hasselblads, Nikons. To me, it's whatever's right at the time for, for the job. I think I'm a lucky guy. I think being a photographer is a very privileged position in the first place. And to be able to earn a living bringing photography, which is an obsession and a love affair for me and has been for many years, with my other interests in travel, history of exploration and daylight, I couldn't have a better job. To me, it's perfect. It's been hard work and it continues to be hard work, but what a great way to earn a living. So yeah, if you want to see more of the pictures from my 20 year journey, just check it out on the website. I post a new picture every day, a little comment, and uh, take a look and let me know if you like it. Now, what I always find funny is that overnight success takes about 20 years. Be inspired. Be better. Be great.